Hello and welcome to another video for Linux.net. Today I'm going to have a look at something that is called Nemo Mobile and which I surprisingly didn't have a look at before. So on this Pine phone, which is my uh, UbiPorts Community Edition, I'm running the Nemo Mobile 0 0.8 image, which is their latest image as far as I know, and it's from March. So uh, they didn't release one in quite a while and that is partially because they are switching over the distribution from a Mare or Selfish OS base over to a Fedora base. That said, I uh, just figured it would be interesting to have a look at this uh, install and, and how that all works and how it looks and how it feels. Now, mind you, camera, phone or SMS does not work on this image at all. There's another way to uh, get a glimpse at this UI and that involves Sailfish OS. You can install Sailfish OS and then, um, well, turn it into Nemo Mobile. There are instructions for that in the Pine64 wiki. So all of this um, has its origins back in the Migo days which was this joint effort by Intel and Nokia, so two giants of the industry, um, to come up with a Linux system for mobile devices, from netbooks to smartphones. And unfortunately, that uh, never really turned into anything. It was, uh, they joined up because um, Nokia before had been working on Memo with the N900 and uh, uh, and and nine and uh, so on, uh, although the N and nine came after this. Uh, so, uh, but the N nine hundred and uh, Intel had been working on something called Moblin, which was a Linux distribution mainly for netbooks. And uh, then they merged this all into a thing called Migo. And well, unfortunately, uh, that never went anywhere. Now, if we have a look at this and just do this with both devices will see that this one has even a nice parallax effect. So this is likely because uh, there are more sensors and hardware features working in this newer image which is built on the uh, current uh, Safish thing. Now as you can see there are a few graphical glitches here and um, I'm not really proficient in, in using this at all. Now you have a couple of uh, switches here to turn off uh, notifications, to turn on Bluetooth, um, to turn on, on location awareness of cellular data, like you would know from Android. And then uh, you've got uh, this app launcher, which currently doesn't render properly, apparently. And uh, then here is a multitasking overview, which uh, if we open more apps, these are uh, likely safish apps. Um, so from Safish OS, um, they they show up here. It's the same uh, with this install, and I'm just going to try and restart this in order to get uh, maybe rid of those graphical glitches. Well, yeah. Now one thing you have to uh, do is um, well you can skip the tutorial, the Safish tutorial, by going like this, you know, start on top left and then go top right, bottom right, bottom left. Uh, just uh, and then um, don't set any lock code because uh, screen lock code because that uh, you, you or if you set one, disable it before you switch over to Nemo Mobile. Otherwise, you won't be able to unlock it. Um, those are all that is has to be in instructions. Um, now let's have a look at mainly this uh, original Nemo mobile image. So um, calculator is just a basic calculator and it doesn't seem to have uh, any advanced options. Camera, uh, well, as I said, does not work. Um, you can apparently set the ISO, usually maybe other features, um, file manager, well, yeah, pretty basic too. Uh, but what's nice, and I really like this, are those indicators uh, when starting an app. That's really 
better to me uh, than what Fosch does, which is nothing, and what uh, Plasma Mobile does, which is this giant splash screen. So these points are tiny, but you know, okay, I tap that icon, uh, it's doing something, which really helps. So uh, phone calling doesn't work, but I think these buttons are so big, uh, they would have even worked on a tinier screen like uh, on this Open Moconia Freerunner for which Nemo Mobile is not available, by the way, um, because this one is really ancient. Um, then messages, also very bare, minimal UI, but I have to say I kind of like that. It uh, ha has some kind, uh, some sense of purity and uh, seems really, uh, really, well, uh, you know, it, it has what, what you need and why not? and uh, then you can always have the feature creep come in later. So this settings screen also is really uh, well thought out, thought out in my mind. It's definitely better than the settings of uh, current iterations of Plasma Mobile, which are quite confusing. I always hit the wrong stuff here. The text is large and the icons are monochrome, but you know what they mean. I mean, desktop is maybe a bit confusing. Uh, you can enable a windowed mode, so let's just see what that does. Um, if we open the people up, well, nothing apparently. Doesn't change th a thing, but uh, well, that's fine too, I think. And uh, then um, we can disable this again if we could. Well, yeah, okay. And uh, Generally, this is really uh, quite queer, quite sorted. Personalization, network, security, development, with developer mode. Unfortunately, I don't know uh, that. Uh, uh, I don't know the the SSH password. I tried to log in yesterday, but uh, I couldn't find it on any of the websites. Um, which was disappointing. But let's just hear briefly log into my Wi-Fi to demo that that works at least so and here again that indicator which uh, <coughs> of all waiting indicators I have to say I like the most oh input output error did I mistype maybe I don't think so it's easy enough I don't really know what this keyboard is based on, but I'm assuming it's also based on the uh, Malit or Malite, whatever. You know, that, that f same framework all the good Linux, mobile Linux keyboards are based on, um, um, you know, where, where, where Plasma Mobile switched to recently. Okay, apparently I can't join my little Wi-Fi network here which is sad, but let's try it again. It worked uh, in an early attempt, so I'm a bit confused why it doesn't now, but yeah, now it connected, okay, great. And now in developer mode you can also see the IP address, and then you could theoretically SSH in, but I don't know the password for that, sorry. The username is Nemo. Um, on both variants. Uh, so, that's that. Uh, and if you switch over Safish, um, just remember the password in Safish and then you're going to be fine with SSHing in on Nemo Mobile. Sorry that I'm losing my voice here, um, but uh, it's been a tough week. Now, packages is an application where I don't really know. You know, I get this screen forever and uh, then if you tap that <laughs> reload button, it goes to system is updated. So that one, I don't think it's really working at all. And if we uh, try and go, oh, did this turn off? Yeah, it didn't turn on again, I think. Sorry, I can't show you any more of that, uh, but yeah. Um, so that's Nemo Mobile. I really think it shows some promise. I 
like it a lot. I like this uh, multitasking view, um, which is really comprehensive and works well. And I think it's very inspired by the Nokia N9, which had a similar multitasking view, although I never owned one of these devices. And um, yeah, I really hope that their transition to Fedora will follow soon and we will see great uh, images for the Pine phone again from the Nemo mobile team. And that maybe we can then on Fedora also try running um, like GTK apps or something, which would really make uh, this a lot more useful because, or, or Plasma Mobile apps maybe, because honestly I uh, like their launcher better than Plasma Mobile's, but Plasma Mobile has some good apps, so that would be a great combination. And I'm really looking forward to that, um, even though there's not too much to show right now. So thank you for watching. Uh, have a great day and or a great week whatever you know have a good time and see you soon goodbye